Hey, what's up everyone? It's Justin here and today I want to give you a quick overview of iOS 8. So in this video, I would like to give you a general overview, some of the more key features that were introduced by Apple today. Of course, I won't be covering everything and I won't be going in full detail of everything. Instead, I would like to give you a general overview and what you will notice on an everyday use. So the first thing you're going to notice is that on the home screen, there really isn't a new visual look to iOS 8. That came in iOS 7 and we didn't really expect anything major in terms of the visuals to be changed in iOS 8. Instead, they brought in many new features and more functional changes in iOS 8, a lot of which we have seen previously in Android or the jailbreak community. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the messages. As you can see, there is the camera icon and the microphone icon along the top. And by holding on that for a second, you just need to drag to the top and talk, um, say anything you want for your voice message, release it, and it will send that. You can also do the same with photos very quickly. Just slide up, it'll take the photo or video very quickly and easily. And in a way, it definitely embraces the concept of Snapchat integrated into iMessage. Another cool thing is that you're able to reply to messages as they come up and you will also notice that the keyboard has changed drastically and ever since the launch of iOS, the keyboard has remained mostly the same. In fact, there is support for third party keyboards such as swipe. It also brings functionality such as predictive text and it even looks at your messages and predicts what you would like to say next. So it is really just much more efficient in general. Within different messages, it is also giving you options to turn on do not disturb. As you can see, I have that on for my mom temporarily as I'm trying to record this video. In fact, you can also send your current location if you're hoping to meet up with some friends or have it on temporarily so they're able to find you, for example. Sliding down the notification tab, they have kind of simplified a little bit. Instead of having the today notifications and miss notifications, they have cut it down to two. In fact, you're also able to reply to messages like we saw before. And the same goes for your lock screen. You're able to reply your messages from there. And in the today view, you're able to edit that and even open up to developers to make their own widgets that are interactive with any notification center. Lifting up our control center, you can see things here have pretty much stayed the same, although there are some small tweaks visually to the brightness. And in terms of the multitasking, I find it just a little bit snappier actually. And on the top, you also have your favorite contacts or your recents, making them very easy to access. However, I wish that they did have the option to kill all apps at once, which we did not see in iOS 8 today. Moving on to the camera, Apple in general has kept it very simple through its time, but there are a few different additional features that they have added now. There is the time-lapse mode, and although there are some third-party apps for that before, it is nice that they have integrated it into the standard camera app now. And through the photos, you also have the option for um, a self-timer of 3 seconds and 10 seconds, and it even has the LED lights that blink to notify you if you're on the other end of the camera when it would start to take the photo. The focusing obviously has the focus lock and you can also kind of change the exposure within your image as well. So although it is still rather simple, Apple has kind of given you a few more options within your camera app and also in the editing, which I'm going to show you here. In terms of the share settings, there is also some change there. You can also favorite your photos and have them in its own category. But let's just go to a random photo here and in the editing, you have the option to change the exposure, the contrast, and kind of go further in terms of editing your photos. So for photo enthusiasts out there, you will really love this feature. For the filters, they pretty much do stay the same, and I actually use these quite a bit actually, especially the fade. And in the crop, you can now rotate your images, which is something that I find myself wanting for quite a while. So now moving on to Siri, there are also some improvements here. You can activate it by saying, hey Siri, and that kind of relates to Google Now on Android devices. But as always, you can just hold on the home button and it will take you straight to Siri. It is now a little bit snappier as I've noticed, and there is also Shazam integration. So you could say, what is this song? It will listen to it and it will bring it up. So very convenient in that point. Personally, I'm someone who uses Shazam quite a bit, and a lot of times I actually missed it because I'm trying to get into the app. In the settings, you can see the visual side pretty much has remained the same as expected, but if you go deep into your usage settings, going into your battery will reveal what is taking up your battery. So in my case, it is YouTube and messages. I use those all day long, and this is kind of something that we have seen on Android over the years in terms of what is taking up the most power, so you can kind of control that accordingly. 
With iCloud, they have also tried to encourage home sharing and also they have introduced something called iCloud storage. Back into the messages, something that we also saw was store messages. So a lot of times your phone may be filled up with a whole bunch of random stuff and a lot of times that is your messages. So you can enable it to delete your messages after a certain amount of time. Moving over to the mail, I would say that they have borrowed some features from Mailbox, which seems to be very popular. You slide it halfway and you have the option for red, trash, or flag the uh, message. And you can see here the reply does seem a little bit different. In Safari, you can also request a desktop site now because a lot of times the mobile sites are pretty annoying and you're not able to access what you may want to. So by doing so, you can very easily have the site switch to desktop view. Narrowing down to our last few features, there is also the spotlight search which can now allow you to bring up Wikipedia and in some cases you could search up your favorite restaurant or topic or anything so they kind of just made spotlight search something that's very easy to access and quicker in general. As rumored, Apple did release its own health app which really ties into the amount of third party integration that they really want to encourage this morning. There's a whole bunch of different things you can add specific to your health needs there and track different things and I think that is definitely something that a lot of people will use and you can also actually have your medical ID so for example if you have a medical emergency um, people will be able to access your health conditions right away. So aside from that, that is pretty much a quick overview of iOS 8. I tried to cover pretty much everything that I would personally take advantage of and of course there are many more other features that were not mentioned in this video. Another thing that I really wanted to note was the continuity and if you're a Mac and iPhone user that is just probably the best thing that was announced today. The feature that would allow you to kind of be always in sync with your Mac as personally that is what I work on and have the ability to access calls and send SMS messages directly from your computer is just really great. And I will conclude to say that iOS 8 is definitely a worthy upgrade if you were someone who enjoyed iOS 7. It definitely brought quite a few different features from the jailbreak community and Android features that I've been always wishing to come on the iPhone. But aside from that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you would like to get your hands on the iOS 8 beta, be sure to check the links in the description as I did do a tutorial on that. But aside from that, I'll see you all in the next video.